Mr. Scott, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Bob. And it's certainly a pleasure to be here as we celebrate the kinds of things that can be done when we work together. Uh, we've been working together on the Youth Promise Act for uh, many years, and uh, we've gotten a lot of co-sponsors and a lot of support because of the uh, work we've done together. And working together, uh, I'm reminded of a story of an organist who was going around from church to church uh, giving uh, organ recitals, and he was at a very historic church, a large, very historic church. They had a great big organ, but like I said, it was an historic church. It was so historic that the organ wasn't hooked up to the electricity. You actually had to pump the air to make the thing work. And so he got up and was introduced and announced to the audience that I will now play Mozart. And he sat down, hit the keys, nothing, not a sound. He looked over where the man was supposed to be pumping the air. He was there, announced again, I will now play Mozart. He sat down, hit the keys, nothing, not a sound. He looked over, the man looked back, I will now play Mozart. <laughs> hit the keys, nothing. He walked over, sir, when are you going to start pumping the air? And he said, I'll start pumping the air when you tell the audience that we will now play <laughs> Mozart. <laughs> That's a... Um, Working together, we can get a lot done. Uh, for the last decade, you've been, you've been f focused on, to quote Gandhi, on being the change that we wish to see in the world. And you're dedicated uh, to public policy and legislation that will expand peace building and nonviolence. Uh, the Youth Promise Act, with focus on prevention and early intervention, is a great fit for this organization. But I'd like to explain just a little bit about how I got involved in uh, prevention generally and how long I've been involved. I was in the State Senate in 1987 when I championed the development of the Virginia Council on Coordinating Prevention. It had several goals, uh, healthy people, healthy children and families, safe and productive uh, communities and got all the different agencies with human services, education, social services, everything around the table as they talked about what they could do to prevent problems from happening uh, before they occurred. Um, one of the uh, problems we had had is everybody would look at their own agency and frequently solve some of their own problems and just by doing that create problems for others. Like in education, if you kick a kid out of school, that solves the problem for education. But then along comes criminal justice and said, all you've done is line them up on the way to prison. And so what can we do together to make sure that we're doing uh, what we can do to save money and reduce crime, reduce uh, illness, and everything else? Uh, unfortunately, the um, council was eliminated after I got elected to Congress. I wouldn't be champion at it got caught up in a reorganization, and when you looked up, it wasn't there anymore. But it was that kind of effort that got me started um, in prevention. Now, one of the, um, uh, per one of the issues involved in um, prevention, one of the easiest one is, um, is, is crime policy. Um, and you, can really, you really have a choice. Uh, you can reduce crime, or you can play politics. We know, when I talk to um, um, young people, they can take advantage of my work on the Education and Workforce Committee, get a good job, get a good education, or they can take advantage of my work on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, we lock up a higher portion of our population than any country on Earth. So they have a choice, but also we have a choice. And whether or not we're going to play politics with crime or actually do things that reduce crime and save money. Uh, unfortunately, we've been making the wrong choice. We've been codifying slogans and sound bites, uh, three strikes and you're out, or rhymes like if you do the adult crime, you do the adult time, stuff like that. It gets to the point where there's one, uh, one I like is, no cable TV in the prisons. You can just imagine the cable guy showing up, disconnecting the cable, and everybody says, oh, now we're safe, crime's going to go down. Um, <laughs> Uh, these poll-tested sound bites are appealing. They help politicians get elected, but usually they have a couple of things in common. Uh, one, they do nothing to reduce crime, and two, they overload the prisons and frequently just waste the taxpayers' money. 
We've been uh, codifying all those slogans and sound bites for so long that we now lock up a higher portion of our population than any country on earth by far. Uh, about 700, over 700 per 100,000 individuals. Uh, the Pew Center on the States has calculated that anything over about 350 per 100,000, you're getting diminishing returns. Now, in most countries, it's 50 to 200, but anything over 350, diminishing returns, and anything when you get up to 500 per 100,000, it's actually counterproductive. You got so many children being raised with the parents sitting up in prison. You got so many people with felony records can't find jobs. You're wasting so much money that you're actually adding to crime, not reducing crime. And like I said, that's at 500, we got 700 per 100,000 uh, locked up today. In the minority community, it's just off the chart. It's in the thousands. And so if you look at that, we know one thing is that it's not free. We're spending all that money and getting nothing for it, particularly egregious when we know uh, what works. Instead of uh, letting children get into what they call the cradle-to-prison pipeline or school-to-prison pipeline, uh, we know what works. Prevention and early intervention, starting very early, teen pregnancy prevention, so fewer babies are born into dysfunctional families, prenatal care can reduce mental retardation and learning disabilities, nurse visits can reduce child abuse, highly correlated with future crime, early childhood education, so they're not on the way to dropping out. Uh, they tell us, uh, teachers tell us that um, up to the third grade you learn to read, after the third grade you read to learn. If you're not uh, reading after the third grade, you're not learning after the third grade, and you know, no way to drop it out, which again is highly correlated with future crime. Uh, after school programs, summer jobs, restorative justice, those are the kinds of things that we know uh, will reduce crime. Getting young people not in a cradle to prison pipeline, but a cradle to college and career pipeline. We know that those things will reduce crime and save money. And so, uh, we put this uh, idea into the Youth Promise Act and require communities to come together. First, ascertain what they're spending on prisons and teen pregnancy today. Uh, you know, if you have a good prison reduction prevention program, you're also going to reduce teen pregnancy and a lot of other problems. But the two big money uh, spenders would be prisons and teen pregnancy with social services and Medicaid associated with it. Put that number in the middle of the table. A lot of communities in high crime areas, that number is going to rival the school board budget. And so if you have um, uh, all that money on the table, you know that you're not limiting your imagination to $5,000 and $10,000 programs. You can spend millions uh, to save tens of millions uh, if you put a good, a good plan together. Uh, put a good plan together, and once it's implemented, uh, uh, make sure you evaluate it, make sure it's working. And as people save money, and you know they're going to save money, get them to kick back some of the savings to keep the programs running. So that if you fund the Youth Promise Act uh, initiative once, the area doesn't have to come back for more funding because they'll be saving so much money that they can keep the um, uh, programs going. Now, we've been working at the federal level to pass uh, the Youth Promise Act for, for uh, several years. We've got over 200 organizations that have um, endorsed the Youth, Youth Promise Act, including uh, the um, uh, Peace Alliance. Uh, we had grassroots organizations all over, all over the country. And um, uh, the, your group has been just um, uh, marvelous on this. A lot of people will call out of the blue and say they want to co-sponsor, and I know exactly where that came from. Uh, somebody on the Peace Alliance was, um, was harassing them to the point where <laughs> where they couldn't think of anything to say about a bill that reduces crime and saves money other than, okay, I'll co-sponsor. Uh, Bobby, you're going to want to meet uh, Cheryl Kaplan, who got Congressman Yoho that's right. <laughs> to sign up. Um, ben and Jerry's ice cream socials on Capitol Hill have produced a lot of uh, co-sponsors, piece of pie campaigns, numerous letters. Uh, you've been laser focused, and it certainly made, made a difference. And um, we're still working on it. We're trying every different kind of legislative technique possible. In my new position as ranking member on the Education Workforce Committee, it gives, puts me in a position to um, do things I didn't have before. Uh, for example, we're reauthorizing No Child Left Behind, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which puts funding in low-income areas under Title I to try to make 
the idea of equal educational opportunities somewhat possible. You know, we fund education through the real estate tax, so wealthy areas obviously will have more money than, uh, than others. And so Title I puts money in the low-income areas, so they'll have a chance to provide um, uh, decent education. And we are hoping to get the Youth Promise Act as part of that, so when No Child Left Behind is reauthorized, all of a sudden we've passed the Youth Promise Act. Now sticking a bill in a larger bill is not new. Everybody has heard of Jim Webb's 9-11 uh, GI Bill. Very few people know that if you look it up in the, um, in the archives, that bill didn't pass. What happened is the provisions of the bill were put into a defense authorization bill, and as we passed the defense authorization, along comes the GI Bill. So we're using that technique in uh, elementary and secondary education. Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act needs to be reauthorized. We're going to get it in that. Uh, even uh, criminal justice reform, the Safe Justice Act, which is comprehensive criminal justice reform, which uh, starts with prevention and early intervention, better known as the Youth Promise Act, and goes into diversion so you're not unnecessarily uh, incarcerated pretrial. Uh, drug courts so that we can deal with your underlying problems, just not let you uh, send a few, day, a few days or months or years in jail, come out and you, re you have the same problem you had. Let's deal with the underlying problems. A significant reduction in mandatory minimums that have done nothing but load up the prisons and do nothing to reduce crime. Uh, prison reform, so when you get to prison, uh, you get uh, uh, education, job training, and other services so that when you get out, you're less likely to commit a crime. When you get out services um, uh, that um, uh, will make it more likely that you can stay out, even uh, uh, super, uh, supervised release reform, if you miss an appointment with the uh, parole officer, you shouldn't get revoked and sent to jail for three months. If you get sent to jail, you're going to lose your job, you lose your apartment, you come back as a convicted felon, homeless, looking for a job. Uh, that's a recipe for recidivism. Also has police training for better, uh, better police training and body cameras, um, all funded because the bill gives the Attorney General the authority to reprogram prison savings money to the things that cost money, like the Youth Promise Act, like the Second Chance programs, like the drug courts, and everything else. Um, there's a body camera bill in the Senate that costs $100 million. They're spending all their time looking for the money to pay for it. Uh, and can't get the bill moving until they find uh, 100 million sitting around. We don't have to worry about that because the savings in prisons will be so, so huge that they can fund everything else in the, in the, uh, uh, in, in, in the bill, including the provisions under the Youth, Youth Promise Act. And so we're doing everything we can, and, and your calls to, your, to members to get them um, signed up will make it more likely that the final version of some of these bills will include uh, the Youth Promise Act. Now, one of the things that I think is important when you're talking prevention and early intervention, and one of the reasons this group is so important, is that prevention initiatives rarely have a constituency. Usually, if you have a problem, everybody advocating for that problem already has the problem. Like if uh, the mental retardation, I mean, they're looking for insurance coverage, respite care, other kinds of insurance coverage, all, uh, services. Um, we know that prenatal care uh, is effective in reducing the incidence of mental retardation, but since they already have it, that's not one of their priorities. Uh, so that anytime you have a problem, all the ones advocating on that problem, crime or something, any, anything, uh, the prevention never sees the light of day because all the advocates are trying to do, deal with the effects of the, of, of the problem. So that when you come up, and advocate for things like the Youth Promise Act, that fills that void. That means that a good idea not only is a good idea in the abstract, but it also has a constituency uh, working for it. Now let me uh, end with a poem I found a couple of years ago that kind of outlines the challenge we have when we talk about uh, prevention and early intervention programs. Uh, the poem is uh, written by Joseph Mallins way back in 1895. It's called A Fence or an Ambulance. It goes like this. "'Twas a dangerous cliff as they freely confessed, though to walk near its crest was so pleasant, 
but over its terrible edge there had slipped a duke in full many a peasant. And so people said that something would have to be done, but their pro projects did not at all tally. Some said, put a fence around the edge of the cliff. Some said, an ambulance down in the valley. <laughs> but the cry for the ambulance carried the day, for it spread through the neighboring city. A fence may be useful, it is true, but each heart became a brimful of pity for those who had slipped over the dangerous cliff. And the dwellers in highway and alley gave pounds and gave pence, not to put up a fence but the ambulance down in the valley. For the cliff is all right, if you're careful, they said, and if folks even slip in a dropping, it isn't the slipping that hurts them so much as the shock down below when they're stopping. <laughs> so day after day as these mishaps occurred, quick forth with the rescuers Sally to pick up the victims who fell off the cliff with their ambulance down in the valley. Then an old sage remarked, it's a marvel to me that people give far more attention to repairing the results than stopping the cause when they'd much better aim at prevention. Let us stop at the source all this mischief, cried he. Come, neighbors and friends, let us rally. If the cliff we will fence, we might almost dispense with the ambulance down in the valley. Oh, he's a fanatic, the others rejoined. <laughs> dispense with the ambulance? Never. We'd, he'd dispense with all charities, too, if he could. No, no. We'll support them forever. Aren't we picking up folks just as fast as they fall? Shall this man dictate to us, shall he? Why should people have since stopped to put up a fence while the ambulance works in the valley? But a sensible few who are practical too will not bear with such nonsense much longer. They believe that prevention is better than cure and their party will soon be the stronger. Encourage them then with your purse, voice, and pen, while other philanthropists dally. They will scorn all pretense and put up a stout fence over the cliff that hangs over the valley. Better guide well the young than reclaim them when, when old, for the voice of true wisdom is calling. To rescue the fallen is true, but tis best to prevent other people from falling. Better close up the source of temptation and crime than deliver from dungeon or galley. Better put up a strong fence round the top of a cliff than an ambulance down in the valley. Uh, members of the Peace Alliance, in your visits to uh, all the members to, uh, on um, a Monday and Tuesday, uh, talk about the importance of prevention and early intervention, talk about the importance of the Youth Promise Act, talk about the prevention, the, the importance of uh, reducing crime and saving money. You know, the, the comprehensive um, uh, crime bill, the Safe Justice Act, does that. Reduce crime and save money, because we know that if you build a fence of prevention, a fence of nonviolence, a fence of peace, we can keep our nation secure and get young people out of the cradle to college pipeline and into the cradle to college and career pipeline. Thank you very much.